Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to the channel. And I thought, having talked a lot about Revo slots for a while, we could try something else. So here is This Week in the Shed. And I do still need to sort out that acronym. So This Week in the Shed, I have been building a load of magnetic racing kits. The kits I've built before and kits that are fairly simple. There's a, a flag wavers post. I've done one of those before. I'll put a link for that video up. There's some picnic benches and there's yet more advertising billboards of which I've done many and modified many and you will find probably quite a lot of videos of them on this channel and I've got some different stickers to put on the billboards this time so we'll get to those in a bit and we'll get to the flag waivers post in a bit and we'll start with the picnic benches and you're going to need a file some CA glue a knife maybe and of course a cup of coffee now this video is about 20 minutes of me doing things in fast forward but it's drink along as well and this you might need two cups of coffee for this because there's going to be quite a lot of drinks so let's get on with this pressing these out of this uh, sprue here and I shall build this and while I build this I'll talk to you about some of the other things I've been doing this week which is reading your comments reading your comments on my analog switch box and reading your comments on my um, question about am I a collector so I thought you can watch this and I'll talk about those things a little bit so the first thing I want to talk about is the analog switch box because there's a guy called David Pinner and he immediately bought all the bits and tried to make the box and he ran into a few problems and if you look down the thread you'll find out that when he got to it it wasn't the design of my box it wasn't faulty relays although he did buy new ones to try and replace them it ended up being a short in the single straight Carrera digital lane changer so if you have issues you might want to look at that Thank you, David. Time for a drink. I told you it was drink along with Dave. Right, let's get back to it. So among all the comments on the am I a collector question, obviously there's two people whose opinions are quite important here. One of them is Revo slot enabler John Albright, who declared me an enthusiast, not a collector. And the other one is, you know, quintessential collector, Raul from Conquest Racing, who said I'm definitely a collector. And then repeated that again on the Slot Car Shenanigans live stream on Thursday night. So that's two opinions. There is a broader opinion that I am possibly an enthusiast with a collection that seems to be the general consensus i'm not sure what what the line is between enthusiast and collector but consensus decision making says i'm an enthusiast with a collection sorry Raul, i think john might be right on this one according to everybody else not me so where have i got to here oh yeah i've separated out all the bits for four picnic benches and I did break one of the bits, as you can see on the left. But it's alright, because you get spare bits. Time for another drink. So let's zoom in a bit, and you can watch this a bit closer up, while I put it together in Fast Forward. And some more comments. Well, Pistol Pete 651 reckons I'm a hobbyist with a collection. Sufar Speedway called me an apprentice collector. Mm. The Reverend Jim Banks thinks we're all just addicts. Uh, he's probably got a point there. And uh, Pat Bakers described himself as a collector that makes full use of his collection. And I think by implication, that's his opinion on where I stand in this as well. So, yes, th there seems to be a nice grey area between enthusiast, hobbyist and collector 
and there's probably a Venn diagram and I'm probably not in the middle of it but I'm probably standing in a bit that's too intersecting if you get me so we are just finishing off this bench they're really straightforward little kits these ones you can smash them out in no time at all I might even do a how fast can you build a bench kind of speed competition on here one day you never know I did record something for that a while ago but I never put it out so there's a bench time for another bit of coffee and ready go there's four benches magic it's not anything to do with the coffee it's just the fingers but I have now run out of coffee so I'm gonna have to do something about that and then we can get on with the next bits of kit which is going to be the billboards so here we go fresh coffee four billboards to make and I've done these before as I say I shall put a link somewhere in the description possibly in that little pop-up at the top I'm going to use a bigger knife for this one because we're going to have to do some cutting and a block to cut on. I'm going to do what I did before and make a load of these but ignore the legs on them and make them so they hook over the, the walls on my layout scenery. You've seen me do this before. As I say, there'll be a link somewhere. So we should probably talk about some of the more in-depth comments. All Scale Slot Cars said, This is a great topic. I knew I was a collector in 1974 when I was about 10 years old and received my first AFX two-car slot car set. I looked through the pamphlet of all the other cars and that made me desperately want to drive some of those on my track as well. So, collector, in my case, is seeing a car that I like and wanting to drive it on the track. And since I, thankfully, haven't had to discard any cars after use, they simply collect on the shelf or in a container, each waiting for me to return to them, which I do. I think that's quite a good description. That is definitely a collector who runs his cars. And that's me just about managed to push all the bits I need for all of these boards out of all of those sprues. And of course that means Drink along with Dave. It's time for another coffee. So off we go again. And next on the list, Lewis Mumby. He said, it's a very interesting point. I think that once you're engaged in the hobby, it's all about what your budget is and whether the manufacturers are producing the scale models that interest each one of us. My wish list is always bigger than my budget. I have some limited edition releases, but I don't have a single slot queen. Uh, as my, from my point of view, the cars are made for fun, which means getting them round the track as fast as possible. See, now this is blurring the definition because a lot of people say, well, if you race your cars, you're not a collector, you're an enthusiast. But there really is a strange kind of hybrid collect enthusiast in there somewhere, perhaps. I don't like these fusion words, but it might be relevant in this case. And I think it's probably time for another drink. Cheers. We are getting through the coffee. If you're drinking along with me, you're probably hanging off the ceiling by now. This is obviously many hours compressed into one. Bit more filing. Right. John Sweet says, it's a good question with no right or wrong answer. Here's my thought. A newer slot car guy some years back who bought two of every livery he purchased, one to race and one in the box. Uh, he's a collector. Yes, he's definitely a collector because he's definitely buying things with the intent of keeping them nice rather than using them. Although he's obviously got the other side of it because he's using them as well. I think that's quite good. Uh, Rob Sale said, personally, I think we're all collectors to a certain extent because we tend to collect one type of car to race against each other as they are our preferred type. 
But are we just grown men who like playing with toy cars and just keep wanting more toy cars to play with? Well, the concept of playing cars or playing toy cars that we had in our youth is another whole chat that I have in mind for the future because I don't know what the rules are for, inverted commas, playing cars. So another day for that chat. In the meantime, more coffee again. I don't know if this is working as a video or not, but I'm going to carry on. So Joe, who is Herrera's Carrera, said, I would consider myself to be a practical collector. They are, and there's a different definition again. The simple reason that I want people to be able to come over and have a choice of what car to race. However, I buy the cars I want. I love sets of things, but I know that's not a realistic goal for me. The minimum I'd like to have is a pair of the same car so people can drive them against each other, but in different liveries. And a maximum of four of any car, because I think like me, I've just managed to get four of a car to race together but I haven't really got room for six people so I'm not going to have six car digital I think four is probably enough for everybody yeah he says I have other hobbies and I can be a compulsive buyer I live vicariously through the community and people like you Dave who I can enjoy your journeys from behind the screen at zero cost well you know it's not zero cost for me but I'm also doing the same thing and saving myself some money he says to himself while drinking another bit of coffee Saving myself some money by watching other people open boxes, enjoy cars. I haven't had to buy them myself. So yeah, I'm with you on that one, Joe. Now, Mark at Slot Journal had another theory. He said, I think if we buy more than a few slot cars and given any consideration to what we're buying, we're definitely collectors. Although, as John Albright noted, enthusiast may be a better term all round. See, I'm going with that one as well. I guess I consider someone who buys and doesn't run the cars as a pure collector, which is different, I suppose, from a practical collector. There's a distinction we're making here. This is good, isn't it? Um, my own collection runs narrow but deep, as I only buy endurance-type cars, and most things from the mid-90s to current, including LMPs, hypercars, and GTs and stuff. The exceptions are my two Carrera Street muscle cars and the five minis I bought. They are so damn fun to drive, I had to get one for everybody in the family. See, that's not a collector either, is it? interesting point so there we are I've now made one of these billboards it's probably time for another trick there we are and there's four billboards all built nicely and I've done them with variations so this one's got the motorsport is dangerous sticking out the bottom And then this one hasn't, it's just a billboard. This one here has also got the same thing. Motorsport is dangerous, it's sticking out the bottom. And this one's different again in that I've moved the kind of laddish frame up so that I've got the magneticracing.com sticking out the top of that board. So similar but different, which is always good. And then I've got these four stickers to go on here. So I've run out of coffee again. We'll have to get some more of that. And there we are. New coffee. Stickers all applied. And if I turn these over, you'll see I sprayed them all with grey primer first. And then I kind of sprayed them again with white primer, but not to fully cover them. So they've kind of got a bit of a texture on the back. You know, things get dirty, especially the backs of signboards. So it looks like there's some grime. I know nobody can see it, but, you know, it keeps me happy. So onto the flag waver's post. The flag waver can go over there for the time being. He may be the subject of another video. And off we go again. Let's have a look at some more of these comments. Michael Batchelor. I don't collect anything specific, but um, to stick on a shelf... But I have cars that I would like. I normally have two or three of each, and I don't go out looking forward to obtaining a specific car. I have a wish list that I'd like, but I'm struggling to find, or they're not in my price range. He also notes that he doesn't really like the concept of collecting, as that tends to inflate the second-hand prices for the regular guy who likes a livery but 
it might be out of stock now but second hand you just buy as a car but because it's a rare one or whatever that kind of runs the prices up a little bit and i see his point but at the same time a healthy second hand market price is ultimately good for all of us or probably our children once we're gone because they can flog them on and get some of the money back we've spent on it all so i don't know on that one right drink along with dave again So now, having done all of the sanding and filing, it's time to put that flag waver's post together. As I say, there is another video on this, um, on this channel, so you should be able to look that one up. In the meantime, Fast Eddie said, I have the same three Mercedes in my collection. They're great looking cars, but also are great for racing. I love racing, but also collect slot cars. And, that's, and those ones can spend days on a shelf. But I buy to collect, but also to race. But I buy them with a specific goal in mind. So I guess I am a collector. The problem is, I don't have a brand or era I collect. I buy the cars I like. Yeah, I think there's a, there's a difference, isn't there? There's a collector of a brand. There's a collector of an era of cars. And there's just somebody who collects lots of cars. I need more coffee. It's very heady, this subject. So where have I got to? Oh, oh yeah, right. I've got all the steps on. Um, should probably put the little bit under the front step. Not really sure what that's all about, but I put it on. And then we'll build the fence up. In the meantime, Bernard Wheeler. Brilliant chat, Dave. I think all of us are rather close to slot cars. So let's think about music for a bit. If you buy a copy of a few David Bowie albums, you like the music. If you buy all of his albums, you're an enthusiastic fan, but not really a collector. However, if you buy multiple copies of his albums because the label or the cover has a different printing, or it's a commemorative re-release, but the music's the same, or it's a signed one, or, you know, you're paying premium for microns of Sharpie, or it was pressed in a different country, you know, and so on and so on, then you're a collector. Especially if you dare not actually listen to, or even open, a specific copy because it might reduce its value. If you get like this, your focus is less on the individual albums, but more on what you've managed to bring together. Collecting is ultimately less about the things and more about how you collected them. More coffee. So that's an interesting point. He reckons I'm not a collector, but I am definitely enthusiastic. So I'm an enthusiast. So I've built that flag waver's post and now I've painted it white. I did paint grey primer on it and then white primer on it, as I tend to do with a lot of things. And now I'm going to age it down a bit. So a little bit of black acrylic paint, a lot of water, splosh it on. The idea here is it would have been painted white and then obviously motor racing involves usually, especially if it's wet, quite a lot of black splashy water going everywhere and tyre rubber and all sorts of things so they're just trying to dirty it up a bit don't want to make it look too new and then because it will have been used a bit i'm going to get the file out and file the front edges off the steps so the paint's worn away a bit and so is just the timber on the steps where a man has walked up and down those steps many times over many years you know so it's a bit lived in bit of sandpaper, bit of dry brushing some of the darker colour on, rub it off, smear it about a bit with some tissue paper, you get the idea. So here we are, that's a bit mucky and dirty now. And the steps are a bit worn. And I've managed to make a mess of my desk. Excellent. So one last big comment here while I get a printed out couple of bits of graphics I knocked up in Photoshop and put them on those two panels there. Rob from Swift Slots makes a very interesting point and asks a very good question at the end. You buy four or five tyres for your real car. 
Have you bought a collection of tyres? But you're not a collector of car tyres. Buying a set of something out of necessity does not make you a collector. These are toys and you don't need them. But if you like the car and it comes as a set, you buy the set. A collector would strive to buy all the cars that a manufacturer makes, not just the odd few in that set. Here's a better question, and it's ominous. When does a slot car collector become a car hoarder? And there we are, 20 minutes. All those kits are made. I'll get to the flag waver later, and we're done. Well, thanks for watching one of my videos as always. If you liked it, you'll find a button specifically for that. Please subscribe to the channel, it really does help. And if you hit the bell, you will get notifications. This one was something slightly different this time. Check out this slot car channel though.